Oh, man. All right, another day of fun playing with PCBs. It always seems like it should be easier than this, but it just never is. So this is my latest revision of this PCB. This is number three, and I mentioned in a previous video on PCBs that these things are not super cheap. So I'm a little frustrated um, because I've, I've invented for myself a problem with this revision. Now, I corrected all the errors from the prior version of this board. And so far, I have not found one mistake. And that may be a rather bold claim for somebody that clearly has a whole bunch of probing going on. So let me tell you what's happening, I think. And look, if you got some insights, I am all ears. So you can see, um, or maybe you can't. Hold on, let me uh, double check. So I've got... A bunch of stuff going on right here is maybe you can tell and uh, the important part is that little MOSFET okay so I've got one line going back to control this P MOSFET I've got another leg that goes 3.3 volts and then I've got an output the output is an accessory voltage rail that feeds all the other stuff display ADC things like that now I am out of pins on this MCU. This is an ESP32 C3 Mini, and it doesn't have a whole bunch of pins, and I've used them all. So I have to use everything, and that means strapping pins can cause problems. So GPIO2 is the, the pin that controls the gate on this P MOSFET, and P MOSFETs are off when the gate is high. They turn on when the gate is low. So GPIO2, um, it needs to be high to keep the gate off, and that's how this thing should boot up. It should boot with the gate high, that way nothing powers on until I want it to power on. So, um, I've got a pull-up resistor right there you may be able to see. Um, pulling up the gate to the 3.3 volt rail, and thus GPO2 is high. Now, GPO2 is a strapping pin, and in the documentation it says it's supposed to be high. Um, I'm using another strapping pin for a CS on a, that's a chip select on the ADC over here, and it can float. The documentation says that GPO8, which is also a strapping pin, uh, doesn't matter so long as GPO9, which is the, the reset button basically, uh, as long as it is high, and GPO9 is high, thus GPO8 shouldn't matter, and using it for something else shouldn't be a big deal. So GPO2 over here just needs to be high to avoid glitches, and it should be high because I'm pulling it high to the 3.3 volt rail with a pull-up resistor. So that's where I'm, where I'm at on the board. So what problem is occurring? Um, let me show you the oscilloscope here. Okie doke, so here is the oscilloscope, and uh, what can we see here? Well, um, you got a dark blue line, you got a purple line, you've got a yellow line and a light blue or teal line here. So here's how I've got that uh, set up. Uh, the yellow line, which is channel number one, that is the 3.3 volt rail. The light blue here, that's going to be the, the boot or an able pin, and it's supposed to be pulled high, and so you can see it's staying high. Um, the dark blue here, that is the VDD, the accessory power rail. And so then we've got the little purple here, and that is GPIO2. And so what seems to be happening, let me uh, zoom in here and let's uh, run another trace. There we go. So what seems to be happen is you can see the purple right here drops just a touch and then falls off. Okay, so that seems to be during the boot process, GPO2 is getting sampled, I think, because that's how it reads its state. And I think it must be using like an internal pull down to sample that thing to, to test its state, I guess. I don't know. Um, and it seems to be dropping that thing to ground because something is happening and it, it's pulling the whole 3.3 volt rail down. Now, I mentioned that this is on the PMOS gate and it's supposed to stay high to keep the rail off for the accessory power. So I think what's happening is during boot, GPO2 gets sampled and it's dropping for some reason and it, it's opening the accessory rail, the power rail, which 
I think maybe inrush current is is dropping the entire 3.3 volt rail. Now it does come back. So if I zoom out a little bit, um, the 3.3 volt rail does recover. GPIO2 does recover. And if I go out far enough, you will see that the accessory voltage does eventually drop back off. Um, this this takes you know some microseconds. So if I zoom back in here, you'll see uh, the drop is happening in like uh, less than five microseconds. The 3.3 volt rail is basically fully recovered within say 50 to 60 microseconds. It's pretty much all the way back. Um, definitely within 100 microseconds, but it seems like this blip is causing a boot loop um, because apparently GPO2 may be being read low and it's supposed to be high and that is causing glitches. So now I mentioned that I've basically invented this problem for myself. And here's why I'm really frustrated. If you followed all the logic here, on paper, I haven't done anything wrong because I am pulling a pin up that's supposed to be up. I, I wasn't accounting for apparently voltage sag in the 3.3 volt rail because I've already done this. Here's the dumb thing. All of what I just told you was exactly the same on the prior version of this board that worked. And so this is part, partially why I'm so frustrated. I mentioned I haven't found any mistakes. I didn't lay out anything wrong. Um, I fixed the problems that the prior version had, but two things were changed. So number one, so the, the package, the module, the ESP32 module is kind of the same. Well, I mean, it is the same. It's just I'm using a new revision of the ESP32 C3 because they do revisions over time. So I'm using the newest revision of the MCU, which I wouldn't think would cause a big problem. But then I think what I've really done is right here. This right here is an LDO voltage regulator. And prior to this revision, I was using a switching voltage regulator. Now, the reason I changed from a switching voltage regulator over to an LDO is because of voltage ripple. The switching regulator kept going in a power saving mode and that caused blips on the 3.3 volt rail. And that was really causing a lot of fuss with my ADC getting good clean readings. So I thought I'll go back to an LDO. LDO should have much smoother output because there's no switching going on. And this thing's capable of putting out 700 milliamps. And I thought that's plenty because this whole thing doesn't draw more than 300 whenever Wi-Fi is fired up and everything. So I think maybe just this thing can't handle the inrush current. So what I'm going to try to do, and we're going to see if this works, because I know this is a big, long-winded, rambling bullcrap. Lewis, I'm frustrated. Uh, I'm going to try to put a capacitor on the gate to, uh, to see if that can help prevent the sag. And I'm going to put an inline resistor on the uh, the control line here, that GPIO2 line. I'm going to try to shave the, the PCB and expose the trace, clip it, and tack in a, uh, a series resistor, and that should limit the amount of current that can be pulled uh, during the strapping process. It shouldn't affect the, the gate being able to be pulled down because it, it shouldn't affect anything over a long period of time. It should just be kind of a short-term thing. And between that and the capacitor, let's see if I can get this thing to boot correctly. Oh, by the way, one big important thing that I have uh, I've skipped so far, this thing boots just fine without the load cell attached. The load cell is providing a path from the 3.3 volt rail down to ground on the accessory power. So if it's not connected, everything works just fine. Um, it seems to be whenever the, uh, the blip happens and it fires up the accessory rail, that's when the voltage sag hits. And I'm guessing, like I said, it's inrush current. To, uh, to all the crap on the accessory rail that's that's causing the blip. And it's happening right during uh, the, the sampling procedure during boot for that strapping pin. Really, really frustrating. Because like I said, I, I tested this thing before I, I started setting it up and it all worked. Then I hooked up the, uh, the load cell and it didn't. I'm like, mother effer, what on earth is going on? And it's taken me two or three days to really track this thing down. Um, at first, I thought I, it was the, the strapping pins, period, but it's not. It's some weird voltage sag. So I'm going to throw the capacitor on. I'm going to throw the series resistor on. 
and then let's come back and find out if I have really just been going the wrong direction or not. Just because I, uh, I want you to understand my suffering right here. Uh, there is the, the trace and uh, the resistor that I have to just, I have to solder on there. So I'm gonna have to cut that trace. I've already got it scraped clean, uh, make a break and then solder that resistor across it so that it will be in series with the pin. I'm gonna have to do it by hand. I mean, there's no other way for me to do it. Um, yeah, I'll be right back. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty proud of myself. I just did that. Um, that's a 0402 sized 10K resistor. And then uh, on the other side, you can see right there, we've added a capacitor that's 100 nanofarads. So uh, let's see if it works. All right, so step one, uh, we just check, does it boot? All right, so please boot, that'd be great. Holy smokes, it booted. Just booted right up. Uh, let me uh, let me get the probe on this. Let me, let me sorry, <laughs> let me get the probe set up um, and uh, we'll show you whether this right there has gone away. So, uh, so let me get it hooked up. We'll see if the, uh, remember, remember that picture right there and uh, we'll see what it looks like now. All right, I got her hooked back up. So let's go into single. Not triggering. Go stop run. Hey, hey, hey. So let's see, let's uh, put it in trigger. And then uh, let's sorry. Let's so let me uh, let me set this to rising edge. There it is. So yeah, um, everything much much better now. And there it is. So uh, here you can see these two traces, and there are two because if I uh, if I turn the yellow right, that's three point three, and then this will be the gate. So the gate's staying high. All right, so then uh, down here, uh, channel two, that's the enable pin. Channel three is the VDD rail. So if I, uh, if I zoom out, then recapture. There we go. So now you can see uh, the 3.3 volt rail and the gate are staying high. We've got the, uh, the enable pin pulling up there. So if I zoom in here, no blip, no blip at all. So that seems to have fixed it. And now I can move on with my life. Holy crap, what a problem. Very glad to have that fixed. So uh, anyway, uh, what, what have we learned? Well, obviously, if you can stay away from strapping pins, please do. Um, if not, man, is it a booger to figure out what's going on. So that, that's, uh, that's all for now. Gosh, I'm glad that this is over with. Uh, if you know a whole lot about this stuff, please feel free to, uh, to tell me I'm stupid down below in the comments. But if you tell me I'm stupid, please, please tell me how I can be less stupid other than just don't use strapping pins simply because, again, I was out of pins. I had to use them and I thought I had used them correctly, but uh, if, you, if you know anything better, uh, let me know. Next time, next time I will, uh, I will definitely have some knowledge carried out of this one. Anyway, appreciate the time. Thanks.